So I don't generally do videos on this sort of equipment here and normally talk about computer stuff, but because I had this one and I couldn't find any other information on the net about the issue I was having or any internal pictures or diagrams, I wanted to record what I ran into here in case someone else had this issue or someone else was just curious about what's inside this unit. And a quick disclaimer is I'm not an expert in electronics repair. This is probably not the safest way to do that. I'm gonna be messing with some stuff that you probably don't wanna to touch if you don't really know what you're doing. With that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about what I have here. This is a Blue Ready AC200P and is essentially a giant battery bank. Inside it is a two kilowatt hour lithium ion batteries bank cell with an inverter on the top that can take output about 2000 watts via AC outlets and a good amount of other watts via wireless chargers, uh, 12 volt outputs of multiple types, a USB type C and a few USB type A's. And then it can take power in on this side via a solar panel connector or also a lead acid 12 volt battery connector or a wall adapter. And I got this unit for free from someone who was having issues with this and wasn't able to get it working right. And they said it just kind of always had a few issues and then it got to the point that it just wouldn't output power and work for them at all. And it wasn't under any warranty or anything. So I just kind of had it on my own. And because I had it, I was like, well, I might as well play with it and see if I can get it working or get some useful parts out of it. So let's talk about where this unit is and how it's gotten to the point that it is at now. So when I got this unit, it would turn on its screen and show information and the screen would all work fine and had a good amount of charge on the battery, about 80% as reported by its internal screen. But if I tried to charge it, it wouldn't charge and it wouldn't turn on the AC or DC output power. So it was basically just a dud battery. You couldn't charge it, couldn't discharge it or do any of that. And the lucky thing with this unit here is it actually shows you fault codes on here. And I've then tried looking up those fault codes online. I basically only found a few forum posts where people said you should go to the manufacturer and return it for service. I couldn't find a service manual. So basically my only option was guessing based off the faults that I got. And the great thing is they're reasonably decent if you can try to guess it. So the first error I was getting was the NTC error. And looking that up shows that it's likely the thermistor error that was telling it that it couldn't find what temperature it is. And because it couldn't know what temperature it is, I'm guessing it wouldn't start the unit. So my first gut was take it apart and just play with the connectors and check the resistance on those thermistors and see if that's right. So I did all that. I took it all apart, played with those thermistors, put it back together and turned it back on. And that would output power from both the AC and DC outputs worked fine. I could get a lot of power out of it. But when I tried to charge it, it would charge for a couple of seconds at a full like 400 watts and then it would drop to zero and throw the BMS t um, temperature error saying now it was having issues on the BMS system with the temperature. I'm guessing those are different. So looking at it, it had ports labeled on the BMS system. So the actual battery is a separate module in here. I'll show you when I get it open. And it was throwing errors. So let's take a look inside at the BMS unit and what I saw with the thermistor situation there. But for a little bit of how to take this apart if you're trying to do that, is there's these plastic trim pieces around the outside that is like a nice pretty silver I am not great at doing it. I broke quite a few of them, but you just kind of have to break these tabs here and there's a little bit of glue and then those come off. There's a few screws from the top. I believe they're Torx that come in here and that's what holds um, some of this top piece on, but most of the actual attachment is done by these handles, which have two really long hex heads each. So you have to take these two big screws out. They're super long. And then once you do that, the top is disconnected from the bottom. You have to disconnect a few cables inside and it all comes apart. So I've unscrewed the two handles I have right here and I can just pull these out. Here are these massive screws I was talking about. And then the one thing to be aware of with this top piece is it has two wireless chargers on it and those are plugged in via little cables. Now almost all of the cables in this guy are held in via like little silicone thingies that are supposed to keep the cable from wiggling out. And here's an example of it. You can see it kind of has this gunky stuff on it. Generally, if you be careful and pull a bit harder, it'll just kind of pop off and make it so it comes apart. Now that I have the top piece off, I can now remove this upper half from the battery part that's on the bottom. There's a few cables you're gonna have to remove to do that. One is this little cable here that connects to this top controller board. I'm guessing this board is kind of what controls all the management here because this cable is at least labeled as CAN bus going to the battery. You have to connect this big thick guy here and this is probably where all the actual current is going. You have to disconnect this little four pin one next to it. It's actually four cables, but I think it's a four pin. Yeah, it's a four pin. 
and then there's um, one other cable which goes to this front button which you can't take out until you actually lift it off and take it off from the bottom. So I'm gonna lift this top half off, just make sure the cables kind of come out and then kind of tilt it to the side and you'll see where this other cable attaches to the button and you can see where the bottom of the battery is. And here's a look at the battery at the bottom and the BMS controlling board on the top. Can't really see it very great from this view right here, but this is just a huge block of, I believe, 18650 lithium ion cells in here with a few extra cables coming out. So there's two cables here, and I'm guessing these are showing each of the voltages of all the batteries, not the total voltage, so I can see if all the cells are balanced. There's these two big thick ones, which are almost certainly the main power going to it. And then these two little black cables are going to the board where it says NTC2, and the other one looks to be unlabeled. There's also two other connectors above it that say NTC1 and NTC4, but they're unpopulated as this battery is likely designed to support quite a few more cells than it actually had. Also seeing the extra power ports here, which are unfilled and could have had more of these guys soldered to it, I'm guessing. Seeing how it said there was a temperature error, my first guess it had to do something with these connectors. So I started playing around with them. I plugged them into my multimeter and they read about 11.3 kilo ohms on both of them. I heated them up with a heat gun for a few seconds to check if they were working correctly and their values didn't change, so it looks like they're working correctly. I replugged them and plugged them into different ports a couple times just to double check that maybe it was some sort of um, cable running loose and I just had to replug it like I did with the other thermistors. That didn't really do it and I was just kind of trying everything. And the one thing I ended up trying and I think it worked was I plugged two little leads into this NTC1, which was unpopulated, ran it into a resistor of the same amount, and then it started working fine. So instead of charging for a second and then turning off, it would just charge until full, and would charge without any issue. So I put it all back together when I think that was working. But then about a day later of putting quite a bit of power through this guy, it started showing the exact same error and the exact same symptoms again, where it would turn off after charging for about one to two seconds, showing that BMS temperature error. So now I'm in it again to see what might have broken and why it's not working this time. One thing I kind of want to show off right now is my little kind of test bench, because it's a pain in the butt to touch stuff in here and find out if it works quickly when it's all together. And also it's just a pain to plug all these cables in. I found out if you tilt this like this and lift it a little bit, all of these cables can actually reach where they need to go while still having basically full access to both boards. Yeah, everything's hot and exposed and not the safest, but it worked for me and made troubleshooting a lot easier than if I had to fully take it apart for every test round. So now I've plugged in all the cables required for testing, which is the main power lead, this little lower power lead that goes to the same board with it, the power switch, and the CAN bus cable. So if I turn it on now, you can see the LED turns on, it starts initializing, and I can see the screen right now. And it actually won't say any errors until you begin charging it. So it'll look just fine until you actually charge it and it'll click off. So let's take a look at the error right now. I'm just plugging in the power brick right now. It's gonna start firing that up. It's gonna click on the power brick. It's gonna say it starts charging in just a second here. And I can see it's pulling about 450 watts in. It then drops to zero and I can see the fault light turn on. And if I go to the fault, it is that BMS over temperature error that it lights up. And then in order to reset the error, I have to turn it off, unplug it, turn it back on, and it'll throw that error again as I try it. So now I have the camera zoomed in on these NTC thermistor cables. So the two cables that go here, these are the ones I did some testing with. I verified they actually work with temperature changes and that they showed a correct resistance. And then I can show these two leads where I soldered a potentiometer onto it to regulate about the same resistance. And for some reason, that worked. And that seems really strange to me because it suddenly stopped working according to the person who gave it to me. If anyone has experience or know about why this is happening, I'd love to know because I find this fix really odd that I plugged in a unused pad and it made it work. But it only worked for about a day, which is interesting. And either something happened to the circuit again so that it had another issue and now it doesn't like this fix at all, or I'm kind of guessing now this potentiometer got poked. 
And because I have no idea exactly how these thermistors are rated or exactly work, I have no idea what the range for air is, but every time I turn it to about 11.3, it seems to be close enough and work just fine. So let's see if I got lucky. I'm gonna plug power into this guy again, and it's gonna start the couple second phase before it actually starts charging the unit, and we'll see what it reports. This is the wall charger power. It should be charging at about 150 if it's working correct, 450 if it's working correctly. And I hear it click on and it's sitting at 450 and then it turns off again. So that's freaking weird. So now I unplugged both of the included temperature sensors, plugged in just my potentiometer and now it's working just fine. So now I really have no idea what makes this guy work, but it still seems to for some reason. It's another data, so I'm just gonna try testing it again. I find it really weird that it doesn't work with any of the included temperature sensors now, but it does work with just mine. And I really don't wanna use it in this configuration permanently because those temperature sensors are very important in keeping lithium batteries from going boom. Now my only other theory I can come up with is I can see the battery right now is at about 8%. And while I was doing my earlier testing, it was at about 80%. And it could be that it has a different temperature requirement at different temperatures. And it, for any reason, it should be that if you disconnect it, it should be way out of the reasonable range of temperatures for it. So now I'm pretty perplexed about why this is working the way that it is. Because from all of my memory, it would not charge in this situation with no thermal probes plugged in, but my potentiometer plugged in previously but now it's happy to do it and will not do it if the included temperature sensors are plugged in at all. Which I find is really odd because I'm pretty sure that didn't work previously and the only thing to my knowledge that has changed significantly is the amount of charge on the battery. So my only guess I can do now is to try to charge it all the way up and see if that changes the behavior on it. So I've just plugged it into solar right now and seeing what it's doing, and right now on the little solar thingy, it's pulling 400, about 500 watts in for my solar panels. So that's quite a bit of power. And it looks like it'll take roughly four hours to finish charging if it's two kilowatt hours, probably a little bit less as it has some charge and the batteries have worn down a little bit. But I'm gonna keep a very close eye on the temperatures and just overall how it's working because I have no temperature sensors on these batteries right now. And it is very important to make sure that lithium batteries don't get too hot because they will go boom. And the battery's been charging for my solar panels for a bit over three hours now. And it seems to be working just fine. The battery's almost full at 98%. So one thing I wanted to play with was how picky the resistance is. And because I'm using a potentiometer as my dummy resistor right now, I can easily adjust it. So I've ran a few tests on it and it seems to be about 2,000 ohms to about 30,000 ohms is the reasonable range for these temperature sensors. Now, I don't know what temperatures that corresponds to, but from my initial playing of these thermometers and a heat gun, that seems to be a relatively large range of temperatures. So it's probably only there to keep it from going completely crazy. And also from the way I was looking at it, charging it at about 450 watts, it didn't seem to affect charging speed, so it looks like it's just a binary. It charges if it's in the range, or it stops charging if it's out of the range and throws an error. So the most reasonable solution I can think of at this point, because I have really no idea what exactly this board's doing, other than it needs a resistor between about two and 30,000 ohms for it to charge the battery here, is to connect this thermistor so I get some level of battery control and just run it until it throws another error, and hopefully it just won't. So here's my extremely poor fix. These cables are soldered onto the unused pads that are labeled NTC1. It goes over, it gets soldered to the um, thermistor, NTC thermistor that came with the unit, which is taped to the battery, so it has some level of thermal protection. The wires are kind of hidden away. There's nothing on this side here. Everything's relatively covered in tape. This is not good at all, but it should work. Um, maybe it has some level of thermal protection, hopefully. I'm gonna test it one more time before I put it back together and keep using it, and hopefully it won't have any issues. So I'm back to testing this unit like I did the last time when it started having issues again. So I have a few servers running off the AC part of this side, some solar panels with the sun starting to go down. I'm gonna let it discharge to like maybe 10, 20% tonight. And then once it does that, I'm going to try to charge it up in the morning and pull power from it. That's when it stopped working in the morning. It worked for a little bit and then it stopped. So let's see if it wants to fail again in the same circumstances. So it's the next day now, or probably about 20 hours later. And when I came to this unit, I saw the fault light was lit up. I couldn't actually see any codes were selected here, 
but when I take a look at the fault history under data and then fault history, I was getting fault code 43. With two errors at a very close period of time, I'm not sure if they're the same error or not. All of these other errors are the BMS ones that I've been triggering in the past when I was troubleshooting it. But the most recent one is a different error code. It's 43 instead of 41. So if I go take a look at what error code 43 is, it's BMS low voltage. I really don't have any idea of what exactly that means here, but my gut would be it's something about the batteries at a lower voltage than it wants. And normally you don't want to pull from a power battery if it's any lower power than it wants. But since I don't have full logging, I can't really tell exactly what's happened. But to my knowledge, this guy has always had about 400 watts going into it via solar and has been using um, via the wall power probably about 250. So there should have always been a net charge. I don't believe there'll be any period where it would have gone down and it's had quite a bit of battery this whole time. I've gone back to turn the AC power back on. I haven't had any issues. So it seems like a weird intermittent error. So that's annoying. There's another different error that I'm seeing now. So it's been another day of using this device and luckily it hasn't had any issues with the temperature error on the battery. But I have gotten a few more faults that are interesting. So if I look under fault history, I've been getting 42 and 43 in quick succession. A good amount of times I've been getting 43. And sometimes when I get these errors, it'll shut off my AC output. And sometimes when I get these errors, it appears to do nothing, but I don't really know because I don't have great access to the data inside this. But if I look under what fault codes 42 and 43 are, it's the BMS low voltage and BMS over voltage, which I'm guessing means the battery has too high of a voltage or too low of a voltage that it would consider acceptable. And unfortunately, since I don't have direct access to the battery um, cells right now, I really don't know what's going on with the actual voltages and if it's reporting that correctly. And I think I'm at about the end of the journey with this battery right now. I don't really think there's anything more I can do to this battery to make it work better. Unfortunately, it seems like the BMS is having some weird issue and I don't have the ability to really troubleshoot what's going on. I believe it's the BMS board because from all I can tell, the actual cells are operating correctly. They seem to be in the right voltage. They never got even like very warm to the touch. So the temperature warning seems to be a false positive. But I really can't tell because I don't have access. I don't have any repair manuals. I really don't know what's going on and I'm just kind of guessing. And I really hope there isn't something really bad going on under the hood because that BMS is very important to keeping the batteries from going boom because lithium batteries need to be treated nicely. And this battery is kind of ending up in the state of I'll use it if the power goes out or something comes up, but I really don't want to rely on it for anything more than that because I don't really trust it that much. It seems to just keep throwing arrows and just having issues. Please let me know if you have any experience with this sort of battery or Blue Ready products and this sort of error. I'm really curious what's going on here because there's nothing I can really think of that's weird. Maybe it's a weird firmware version, but I expect more people to be talking about it online if it was a firmware error. Maybe I got like a hardware error. Maybe the chip just is acting weird. I really have no idea on here and don't really have anything to be able to investigate without getting a lot of debugging tools, which I don't have access to.